Hey there folks, welcome back to my Battle Sector Tau Planetary Supremacy playthrough here. We've been fighting a hell of a lot of Orcs and the odd Tyranid now and then. We're going to hope for a little bit of variance here, but we don't want to yet fight the actual NPC factions of the Space Marines and the Necrons. The Necrons are being very cautious in their expansion. They're going up the top, which is fair enough. They've got a lot of... Well, both of them actually, both of my enemies here have a lot of extra army points thanks to these structures. So when we start an actual proper war with them, we're going to try and focus on these areas. But for now, I'm going to just attack this area, and I won't bother any NPCs that are going to attack me. So afterwards, I can then just uh, get upgrades and then the turn after reinforce. More rocks, but this time, for a change, we actually outnumber them in terms of points, so it should be quite easy. We'll see, I suppose. Now, we did purchase that extra Riptide battle suit in the last episode, so I think with two Riptides, we should be pretty good here. It's easier to protect my squishy little infantry when I've got two Riptides up front to tank. Hopefully, the Orc brings a lot of Light vehicles and melee units, storm boys and knobs, not shooter boys. I find them infinitely harder to deal with. I think we'll go down this route. No, we won't. No, we won't, actually. It does look a bit too cramped. Maybe put one down here, one over here. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm quite all right with that. Man, the Riptides really are massive, aren't they? Got our little burst cannon stealth suits. They now have stealth drones because the gun drones appear to be bugged. So we're not going to be using them. Breaches at the back. Piranha could maybe go down that angle. And let's see what these orcs have got in store for us. Alright, we're already getting some line of sight here. Quite a lot of enemies, actually. Damn. This is the advantage of the Piranha. Little scout vehicle for us. Alright, that should be pretty good. Fuck it, I might as well move these down too. Let's see what they've got for us, shall we? Actually, hold on. Let's rotate you up this way. There you go. Let's see what comes of that. Okay, they are behind us too. But we'll deal with this side first. Wallback has got evasion buffs in his tanking, which is good for him. Who are you shooting there? What's that? Stormboys? Wait, what was that? Was that the Riptide? Surely not. Didn't seem to do any damage. Oh, the Warbike is tanking everything. Okay, those boys are getting shot by the Fireblade. But he's better at actually killing, like, single entities and stuff. So this is not ideal. But I'm still out of range, I think, of most things. And 
not this. But it's used these instead of attacking, so it's fine. It's fine. Breachers can probably take this out, to be honest. I told you, man. Shooter boys are scary. I was hoping my Overwatch would have peeled off a few more of them first before they got to shoot, but what can you do? Ooh, that was nasty. Yikes. Okay. Good. Hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I one-shot just with my cannon? Oh, very close. Okay, fine. Oh, he lived? Really? What are the chances of that? Another pain boy over here. I think, honestly, I'd rather just kill the Shua boys. They do a lot more damage. I can just hit him with the plasma. Chip away at him. But actually killing shooter boys is my problem. Probably should have hit them with a missile launcher first actually, now that I think about it. I think I'll hit these with a missile launcher. And then I can jump at these storm boys. Though I'm a little bit wary that I can't see anything over here. Yeah, we'll be alright, I think. Yes. The sky. Nice aggressive jump here from the Crisis. Won't one shot, unfortunately, but it does two shot. And honestly, with the armor, they're not really that scary to me. Nothing else around here, it seems. Okay, well, let's get killing some stuff, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I could uh, I could just use one of these to kill the Big Mac. That's probably a good idea. Uh-huh. We'll try and hit that war biker. Mark it first. There we go, 64% chance to hit. Wow. That's kind of durable. A little bit of splash from our piranha. Have the drones fire too. Oh, I was meant to hit them with these as well. I meant to do that first because of the splash, whoops. Oh, what the hell? That did basically nothing. Ah, fuck it. I'm gonna grenade him. I do want this thing to die. They're pretty tricky to deal with otherwise. You know, that gun can practically one-shot a strike team. And these guys only having three models, they probably will get killed. Oh, these are my pulse rifle dudes as well? Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's not good. Alright, one more should finish it off. Down. 
Cool. And then we can just rotate this strike team over here. No, not a lot of range on these breaches. To move, that is. But whatever. Yeah, I guess I can move this piranha up and use it to tank. They're surprisingly tanky, these things. 7 armor, 250 HP is not bad at all. I wouldn't have expected piranhas to be that tanky. As you can see, Stombo's doing absolutely nothing to the Crisis teams. A whole gaggle of Stombo's over there. Yeah. This is the job of the Riptide. Ooh, rockets though. Okay, rockets. Really bad. For some reason, the rockets are mostly for killing heavy infantry because they do splash, but they're not even that good against vehicles, so I don't like them. If you've seen my playthrough with Vox, you would have seen I'm not really a fan of the rockets. They seem pretty terrible to me. So we can wipe them. And we can run away. Um, how are we going to deal with these guys? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate you over. Just going to hit them with some missiles. If they do jump these guys, they're not going to do much damage because of the armor, and then we can kill them with flamers. And that means my riptides are now free to rotate over this side and start killing more shooter boys. Grots, of course, we are not too concerned about. I'm actually just going to take out this pain boy. Just get rid of him. Uh, breaches. Mm, not too fussed about that. We can move up and then move back. See if there's all else coming down this way, just these grots it seems. Lots and lots of grots, not too scary, I have to say. Not too worried about some grots, that's for sure. I just don't want to move my strike teams too close to these storm boy blobs. I feel like that could be disastrous for them. You've seen how squishy they are. Very, very squishy. For Viola. I don't know what Viola is. Tell me in the comments down below, what is Viola? Viola. Because I don't know. Should be good, we'll just do max overwatch. I don't think it matters too much, we just got Gross to handle here. I don't understand why Grot guns are doing this much damage to 7 armor. I really feel like armor in this game is just not good enough. Oh, a war boss walking right in front of my Riptides. Brilliant. That's cute. Just like Storm Boys. You'll also know from my orc campaign that I thought Storm Boys were garbage, because they just don't seem to do any damage. They are somewhat tanky for the cost, but as you can see, dude, their damage is non-existent. It's a problem. 
So we got some flash gates around the corner. They're scary, but they're kind of line of sight blocked right now, which is pretty beautiful. They did position themselves quite well here, not to get burnt by... Well, not to get multiple squads burnt in one turn, basically. Where is my momentum? I'm not getting any. Well, we need to kill... Oh, it's not a war boss, it's a big mech. What am I doing? I thought it was a war boss. Um... Yeah, we could shoot him with that, for sure. Probably a call to use this ability, Folly Fire. Buff up all this infantry. Finish off that boy. I don't have a good line of fire. I need to clear these first. Alright. Let's see what our breaches can do. lives. We do kill them though, so that's something. Hmm. Alright, yeah, you should be able to kill the big mech, right? Good. And now what I can do is... I do have some shots here... We're not we're not too scared of the Grot's damage. If I move here, I shouldn't have such inaccuracy, even though I'm closer. I'm still pretty inaccurate. Bloody hell. Yeah, well, we killed a lot of them. That's fine. I'm just going to jump out. They're not going to wipe me. Nah. Fine, you get a crisis suit, whatever. Not a big deal. these carbines can move forward and start getting rid of these grots. Might as well use the marker lights. Man, they are surprisingly tanky. That's kind of ridiculous. Brown is not too bothered, though. I think we're handling this quite well.
No real losses. These guys should get taken out by the carbines. Okay, well at least that can block the damage. Oh god. I always forget they can do that. Yeah, flash kits. Yeah. Scary. Oh, and looters. Okay. Okay. They just took off half of my Riptide's HP. That's pretty insane, to be fair. Right, hold on. So... Ooh. They both got a lot of health. Maybe shoot at the ones at the back. I think. Oh my god, there's more gits. Oh dear. That's not ideal. Oh, I didn't want to see more gits. And this should get rid of both of these. Yeah, good. Where's my fireblade gone? There he is. Yeah, I'm gonna use him down here to try and take out these looters. Um. Maybe the best thing to do with Riptide is to shoot these gits. Because these burner boys I don't really care about. Yeah, shoot these gits. Yeah, that was quite painful. Now they can jump in. They can burn over here. Oh, that was good damage to the gits, jeez. Now... Yeah, walk down there, sure. And now you can open up. And then, the fire blade should be able to finish them off. Photon grenade is pretty useful, isn't it? Breaches are definitely useful, no doubt about it. Now we do have the option to use the breaches again over here, but probably just take out all these grots. Clean up these grots. Yeah, let's just clean up some grots. A lot of Tau Pew Pew going on. I'm surprised the Pulse Carbines honestly really hold their own. They're not that bad compared to the Pulse Rifles. I thought the Pulse Rifles would just be a hard upgrade, but they're not at all. The Carbines definitely have use. Certainly in the other game when you're fighting a lot of chaff like this. In the later game when you're just fighting Terminators and Flash Gits and all that kind of stuff, and none of the Grots and Storm Boys, then yeah, it's not really going to be that useful. But right now, they're really helpful. You just can't clear the infantry fast enough with just Pulse Rifles. Okay. Oh shit! 
Man, I always underestimate the range that these burner boys move. God damn it. What did they just take out? The, the breaches, was it? Oh well. Just gotta bear that in mind in future. Very, very annoying. But overall, not too difficult. Kind of threw at the end there. Losing a squad for no real reason. It was a strike team, fair enough. Yeah, what can I say, man? The strike teams are so incredibly squishy, it's unbelievable. They just drop so fast. Shooter boys can one-shot them if they get within range 2 and you don't have any sort of cover advantage or something blocking. It's pretty scary. But we've got 17 points now, so we can get a hell of a lot of upgrades. I'm going to get the hammerhead gunship. No, I'm not, because I need fusion blasters. Yeah, fine. Uh, we're going to get the commander. And this seems very good, so we'll grab that. I'm not too bothered about the railgun yet. We can get that later. We'll get the Ethereal next time when we can get all of these. Getting this so we actually have the HQ ability seems pretty smart. Ranged weapons auto hit. Ooh. That's interesting. That could be... What could that be most useful on? I mean, it's good with pulse rifle for sure, but... Mm. To be honest, you, you don't really have too much of an accuracy problem with these guys. Ah, but you know what that would be good against? When we're fighting the war bikes from the orcs and they constantly dodge. This could be amazing to negate that dodge. You know, there's a lot of instances where the breaches with their shotguns will only be doing 44% accuracy or something like that. Especially fighting from range 2 because they don't want to get blown up by the vehicle when it explodes. So that could be quite useful. I do want to get broadsides and ghost kills, but the thing is, we only have limited requisitions, and I want to put in the commander and a hammerhead, so... It's probably going to fill out my, my roster quite well. Could get this ability. The ion rifles are just the best man-portable guns that you can get. But Pathfinders do require requisitions too. Um, I think I'll just get this this buff for my Fireblade since I already have a Fireblade. Okay, so now we're going to end our turn and we'll reinforce next turn. And then we should be able to power through the battles. Because our armies will be so much better than the AI. I'm quite glad they're expanding up the top here. So they've really given me time to catch up to them in terms of army size. So I don't get completely wrecked. Because I'm still at 2100 max, which is not good. That's a hell of a lot smaller than they are. Hammerhead is 260. What's this? Uh, so I've got the Ion Cannon on it. This is an Ion Cannon. And so Ion Cannons can be overcharged to do splash damage, but have a small chance of backfiring. Let's grab a Tau Commander. What? So this, this is interesting. Oh my god, there's all sorts going on here. So you can give him shield drone for damage resistance, gun drones. Marker drone, just give him shield drone. He's already a HQ, so he can attack twice. So I don't think you need to be giving him a gun drone. That seems a bit ridiculous. Wow, is this permanent? 
Master of War, that's so strong. 10 ranged accuracy, 15% range damage, what the fuck? So you can see he's got a kind of underslung flamer. Oh my god, and that has zero AP cost. Oh, wow. Guys, it seems to me that the Tower Commander's quite jacked. Why would you get the Crisis Battle Suits for 190 when you could get a Tau Commander for 220? These guys collectively have 375 HP versus his 300, but... Hmm, okay, fair enough. I mean, they got more HP per point. But the damage output from this guy seems a lot better, and these buffs are pretty cracked. That's... that's pretty awesome. So what is the difference in the weapons? So this is 12 attack, 6 to 9 damage, 3 to 5 splash. 12 attack, 6 to 9 damage, 3 to 5 splash. So this just... This one on the right attacks more. Uh, I don't get it. What? Oh. Oh. Ah. Right, so it's based on the battle suit that I put him in. Oh, right, okay. So this is just better. High output burst cannon. So this does more damage. Quite considerably more damage, actually. More armor piercing and 20 attacks instead of 12 is really a considerable increase. But I lose one armor. And my jetpack changes. So currently my jetpack gives me a boost to ranged accuracy and evasion. And doesn't provoke pistol reactions when charging. Okay, so this is quite aggressive with the evasion. But it also increases your... Ac oh no, it's minus 15% accuracy. Oh shit, okay. I think that's quite typical of a jump. All right. This is extra accuracy and movement. Right. So this is durability. This is ranged firepower from the back lines. But because of this buff, I don't really want to be on the front lines. I want to be with my strike teams. I guess frontlining with crisis suits and stealth suits flying around kind of makes sense. But it says it's buffing up all allies, which means it's going to include hammerheads, piranhas, riptides. So they're just so much more valuable than just the crisis suit. So I'm going to go with the cold saw. And I'm going to give him a shield run. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's relatively tanky. Because you're only range free optimally. But he should just be doing disgusting damage. And then he's got a flamer as well for god knows what reason. Let's just compare the flamers real quick. So this flamer here for the commander is 10, dam 10 attack, 6 to 8 damage, AP 2. 10 attack, 6 to 8 damage, AP 2. Yeah, so this is like maybe on par with 2 crisis suit flamers. Pretty good, considering it's zero AP. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, to be honest. And I can't really afford too much else. I could get some drones. Or I could just lose some pulse rifles and then I can get another strike team. We'll do that. I do not like the drones. So we have maxed out again on our army size. We got some options here. We can be bold. We could move over to here. But then we are getting quite close to the border with the Necrons, which would be the same play as going over here, basically. This is not so bold, but these are safe, so I don't really feel like prioritizing them. I think I'll just go, like, here. Boom, 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 boom. Grab all them. That feels pretty... pretty fine. 
can't auto resolve against neutrals, I think, so I just have to fight it. But this should be, you know, these these battles now should be very easy. We've kind of got an outrageous force for fighting neutrals at this point. With two Riptides and the Commander. Quite keen to see how this Commander does with a high output Burst Cannon. Alright, let's do this. So... Why do I have to choose down here? What? Or did I never switch it? Am I that dumb? Oh, you're kidding me. I never switched it. Bloody hell. Fusion Blaster only attacks once, but does a lot of damage. Okay. Um. Yeah, go on then. Let's let's have a Fusion Blaster on them. Thirty to forty on the crisis suit with two attacks. That's interesting because it's different on this, isn't it? This is sixty to eighty, thirty to forty with one attack. Huh. So this just puts it all in one. But the problem is, you're more likely to miss then. Not really. That's a fallacy. Because the, the times when you miss on the crisis, it's going to hurt more. Hmm. Alright, we just have to drop one of them. And we got another ability now on our Fireblade, so the... He can buff someone to not miss, which I think actually will be best used on the Breachers. But we shall see. Nothing shall stand against us. Let's go put down some Tyranids. Alright, speedy boy. Jesus, his animations are fast, aren't they? Good state of this. Dude, the fact that they get this is just insane. Extra 15% extra range damage and 10% extra accuracy. That is so good on a Riptide. What? I just feel like I should be blobbing up now. It's just crazy. Look at this. Man. This is a gigantic boost in effectiveness for your army. Really strong. Okay, there's a Broodlord. The AI always does this as Tyranids. I don't know what's wrong with them. Charging their Broodlord way too far forward on its own. Oh shit, yeah, it's got a fusion blaster now. <laughs> 112 to 150 damage. Yikes. Get wrecked. Wow. Man. This is potent. Ah, 
I'm not gonna lie, I feel pretty busted right now walking around with these riptides and crazy strong commanders and stuff. I do feel kind of insane. I admit. Has this got splash? Oh my god, it does. What the hell? Unnecessary. Unnecessarily good. I swear. Yeah, we've got we got damage. There's no doubt about that. We have sources of damage right now. Let's see, is there anything down here? Apparently not. Apparently not. That accuracy and damage boost is so good from such a long range, free tiles. I feel like that the Tau Commander is quite OP. Sure seems it to me. over here. Ooh, one of a miss, but that was some pretty good damage too. Yeah, I don't know. Tau, they seem pretty good. They seem pretty good to me. Actually, no, it's fine. I was going to say I could have used the thing to not have them miss, but it doesn't matter because these are venom, uh, venom probes, so they're melee threats, so they're going to have to move anyway and come out of this spark cloud where I can hit them easier. So I don't, I don't really care. Uh, Fireblade, can you actually hit this guy? No. Okay, fine. Just kill it without. Whatever. fun. Are they behind us? Was that something behind us? I'm not even sure. Oh, they, he does open up on the weaker one. That's a bit sad. But what can you do? Yeah. Hey, I actually been a bit clever there. Sending in the weaker one first so the Riptide wastes its shot since the Riptide was the closest thing. But it doesn't matter really much they can do. They are behind us. Okay. Probably rotate the piranha there then. Oh, hey up. Oh, this could be bad. If he's in range. Oh, shit. Oh, he can kill my fire blade. Unless he used his extra movement to get into range there, which he might have done. I should really be looking behind myself. Yeah, he must have done that. I really need to look behind because... Well, this is a real threat. Against these neutral factions, they always spawn all over the map. So you can get this. Okay. Let's burn these two, please. Where's my other crisis team? They're over here. Oh 
Hormigaunts, Hormigaunts. Wow, a lot of Hormigaunts. Fair enough. Oh, I should have used this first, actually, before I moved my crisis teams. Damn. Wait. Oh, this affects all allies. So this affects Riptides? Why does this affect battle suits? It just seems too strong. I don't think it should affect battle suits. I really don't. It seems way too good. Oh, I forgot that I've got a fusion blaster. Whoops. I shouldn't be using... I shouldn't be attacking the Homogons. My bad. Anyway, let's open up with the Pulse Carbines over here on these guys. We're in the Tau Commander buff. Very good. Can't move him yet, but he can finish off anything down here that's not killed. Yeah, like, he can probably finish off those Venom Broods. Uh, Venom Fropes, not Venom Broods. Now, the question is... Do I need to move my commander back to kill these? Probably not, right? Range 3. We've got a couple of breaches. So you'd think the breaches would be able to handle this. You would think so, wouldn't you? I think they've got it. Oh, they've totally got it. Oh my god, breaches, dude. They rip up those warriors. Wow. Wow. That was brutal. Yeah, so did just Overwatch. Sure. can just overwatch. Can rotate you and Yeah, finish him off, gone. And now because he's within range of this, it's 95% accuracy, which is pretty great. My god. Hmm. We're getting strong. We're getting strong. Once you get this guy out, wow, it's a big power spike. No doubt about that. Huge. Huge power spike. Now, is there anyone else over here, I guess, is a question. I can't see any. We've only killed half their army. I think I'm just going to sort of rotate that way in Overwatch. I mean, these Harmagons shouldn't be able to do much. They're just going to run into a fire line of death. Okay, they got some other stuff. Warriors. Just devourers, though. No death spitters, so we don't really care. And something else around the back. Might have maybe like a Turvigon or something. What's that? Carnifex? Yeah. Oh, and it walks right into the Fusion Blaster! Ha! <laughs> This thing's actually really strong against single entities. Obviously useless against infantry like Homogons. But it makes the Piranha pack a punch, man. Look at that. Nearly half the HP gone off the farm back just instantly. Really, really strong. Bloody shotguns. They're so strong. Every time I see them, I can't get over how good they are. Breaches are awesome, man. Now the carnifex in the back. Oh, 
that's all right. And a venom fruit. I mean, we just we don't need to engage really. some pulse carbines as well, yeah. Ready for orders. Hundred percent accuracy. That's so much damage. Can walk into these and flamethrower their asses. Oh, that did use an AP. Fair enough. I mean, it's still, it's well worth it. Just one shot them for God's sake. some of these but yeah I don't think it matters too much I feel like I'm really getting a feel for them now. The overlapping overwatch that you would expect from Tau, it's kinda it's kinda coming in. I mean as I say, of course this is a, a trivial battle. The enemy army is really underpowered compared to mine here. Dude! That was quite a long range pulse blaster and that just did insane damage. Having these guys next to him for the accuracy and the damage is really powerful. Wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's skip the single devourer attacking the Riptide, come on. Brilliant. The only downside really I guess is the vehicles not being able to be repaired by anything, that is definitely a big minus. this damage. Goodbye.
Oh, there you go. That was a battle. I might skip some of the next neutral battles if they're easy ones like that, the 1,500 ones, because there's going to be a lot. I'm going to just hop through them. Like, I just completed that with zero losses, so I don't need to spend any time reinforcing. And I only just recently got HQ upgrades, so I'm not going to get them again. So I might spend both of my actions next turn grabbing this and this, and these are both 100s. And it should just be trivial battles like that. If it's against Orcs or Tyranids, I'll probably skip them um, for you guys. Because it's, it's not very interesting fight. It'll just be like that. But if it's a new faction, then I probably won't. That will be the strategy. And these guys fighting one another makes my campaign a lot easier. There is a fair bit of RNG in the campaigns in that regard. Because it just lets me build up safely. So that I can actually catch up in points. So we don't need to reinforce. We didn't lose anything. And yeah, we're fighting Tyranids again with... A way smaller army than me. So yeah, I won't actually uh, record these. I'll just sort of skip them. What did they get there? Plus one AP when charged. Yeah, so Necrons, Necrons are going to be pretty scary now. But I'll be back once I've grabbed a couple of these. All right. Well, folks, we're back. And we have quite a large army ourselves now. They're still slightly smaller than the Necrons here with their 2995. But we are actually now in a position where we can take them on. Can't show you the rest of the map, but I've got most of these regions down here. And the Necrons and the Space Marines have been fighting one another quite a bit. But they're coming to attack me now. And it's a little bit awkward, actually, because if I can win this battle, I'm going to be basically able to take them out potentially next turn. Potentially. We'll have to see exactly how it works. Depends on how attritious the fight is going to be. But let's get into it, because we've got a lot of new units to talk about. For example, the Piranha has now been replaced by the much larger and more powerful Hammerhead gunship. We've picked up an extra Kadra Fireblade, and an Ethereal has joined the gang. So we'll show you what they can do. When we get in game, I believe we've got another stealth suit. Both of the stealth suits now have fusion blasters. This synergizes with the fire blade, who can make a single targeted ally not miss their attack. So I will put those stealth suits behind the fire blade. You can see the size of this hammerhead gunship. I didn't realize they were so big. I mean, it's practically as large as the Riptide. I don't know if that's lore accurate, but I don't know. It seems very strong. And then the Ethereal behind Breaches, Crisis Suits, all that good stuff. And we got a Pathfinder 2 somewhere. There they are. So these guys have Ion Rifles, which are just the better rifles. Better rifles. Better than Pulse Rifles. So this is the first time we're fighting the actual proper NPC faction. So obviously this is going to be the biggest threat for us. He has an absolutely colossal army. Even with all my upgrades, he is bigger than me. Furthermore, all of his units are going to generally be together. Now the Necrons are interesting. And the reason that I actually picked them as one of the main factions to fight is because they are very ranged focused in this game. Now, we'll see if their composition that the AI has here is actually ranged focused or not. We do have some melee options. But if they are ranged focused with the buffs that they get from us playing on the highest difficulty, it could be quite challenging. And it could it could be attritious is the main problem, meaning it, we could win the fight, but lose so many units in doing so that it barely feels like a victory. You know, a bit of a Pyrrhic victory or a Cadmian victory. But we'll see. They still appear to be quite far away. At least we don't have to worry about things coming and attacking us from the sidelines. At least not till the main battle lines sort of collide. Obviously our Riptides will be the tankiest. How tanky are these actually? Wow, these guys are... The Hammerheads are insanely tanky. They're actually tankier than the... No, they're not. Because of the Shield Generator. All right, well, they got some scouting units coming up the front here. You can see the range on the Hammerhead gunship is quite insane. Oh, 
optimal range 10. So that's all the way over here. It's a little bit cracked. Oh, bit of a mistake there. I should be moving my commander up so that we get the extra accuracy and damage. My bad. Okay, so we can get some pretty good buffs there with our ethereal in terms of our durability, but it is a little bit well it's got a it's got a very large cooldown. So we have to time it correctly. I think I'll put the breaches over here behind the wall. And maybe have this crisis suit on the sides. Crisis suits can really exploit range because of the missiles that they get. And we might as well just use these. I would say. There we go. Yeah, just shoot. Oof. Good start. I will slow them down. Execute the hunt car. Standing by. Now our stealth suits here in the back are fusion blasters, so these are really good at taking out big single entities. And they'll be jumping in with their jetpacks to kill Necron Lords and that kind of thing. If they get the opportunity. Just look over there. And we kind of want to bait them into these areas. We should have a ranged advantage, but we'll see. Obviously, as I say, they get some tremendous buffs. What's that? Oh, is that scarabs? Yeah. Barely see them. That's the ion rifles coming out of the pathfinders. And then the burst cannon on my commander. Wow, pulse carbines at that range, not really doing a whole lot to those Praetorians. But that's alright. It's good that they're kind of attacking in dribs and drabs. Death marks. They're pretty spooky. The problem with Necrons in general, wow, that's a lot of Plasmancers. What the hell? Okay, are they going to start using some abilities? Wow, a lot of Praetorians too. Interesting. What's the goal here? Yeah, the problem with Necrons is that all of their guns, even their basic Gauss weapons, have a pretty decent amount of AP, so you really aren't safe for your big armoured units. Okay, this is a lot. I really want to take out these Plasmancers. Death marks are really high priority, but then there's just a load of melee. A lot of melee. Praetorians have jump packs. So that could be scary. So I think we want to shoot what we can and then kind of get out of here, to be honest. Hmm, I might give this guy perfect accuracy. Okay, well, everyone is kind of in this range. Hold up, let's move. Uh, let's move you over here and hopefully I can hit these with some missiles then over the wall yeah. Pew pew that's nice Could 
would be worse, I guess. Fireblade over here. And I'm gonna... Uh, we could pull people back a bit to get this buff. These are on cooldown. Hmm. Well, for a start, let's just get these buffs going. So, 15% bonus HP. There we go. And evasion. And then get him back. He is a terrible fighter. He's just here for the huge, huge buffs. So, she apparently, she's, it sounds like a she from the, the voice acting here. So... This is tricky. My self suits. Hmm. <laughs> self suits really want to be taking out this Hexmark Destroyer. It's relatively short ranged, and the weapon's optimum range too. So something like this would be very good. My issue is I've got this here, but I'm unable to use it right now. Oh, I should have used it already. Whoops. I should have moved here. So this was a bit of a mistake, really. How can I, assist? I need to pull these back so they actually get the buff. Let's just move the commander here. Uh, move you here. Pathfinders have some pretty juicy range. Oh, well, for now, they can sort of step forward, I guess. I want the hammerhead to not miss. And that should get a lot of damage into this plasmancer. Let's hit the back one, fuck it. Since we can't miss them, we're going to overcharge too. Ooh, yeah, that's beautiful damage. That's gorgeous. Alright. Let's mark this fool. Whoa, he's dead? Wait, what just happened? How the hell did this guy die? What? I only marked them, right? Why is he dead? I don't know. This is bizarre. I don't understand. Okay, overcharge attack this Plasmancer. Fortunately, we don't die from just one of the overcharges. And then we're going to get out of there. Crisis team, however, I think is going to go charge these death marks. I think that's their job. I think so. You pop this hex mark, see how that goes. Okay, two hits, good. One more should kill them. And hide behind the corner. These guys are very tanky with their little stealth drones, giving them more damage resist. I'm not too concerned about their durability. Uh, actually, I'd rather they go back here. I do have another strike team. I think I actually am going to move this strike team all the way over here. As vulnerable as they are, I think most of their armies in the center and protected by this slab. Then I can mark these guys, and then I can fly in over here and protect my strike team from being shot in this direction. And of course, burn these guys. These enemies are passionate in cover, unfortunately, so I don't think my carbines are going to finish them off, which is a shame. Especially because Necrons regenerate. Oh, I really could do with hitting them one more time. But I think that could be quite a big ask. Um, I guess I could come over here, maybe. 63% chance to hit. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Got the death marks. That's really good. Death marks are really quite threatening. 
Um, we can move our hammerhead forward now and use the little drones over here to pew 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 pew. Okay, that's worth something. Move you back. Finish off this hex mark with this stealth team. Yeah, let's get rid of him. Very nice. No more movement, but I'm not too bothered because, you know, we've got stealth drones for the damage resistance. We're quite durable and we've got bonus HP on top of that. So overall, honestly, we're in a pretty decent spot there. Okay, this plasma is quite low, this one less so. But I can hit that one with this guy. Um, yeah, let's move up. My infantry, I kind of want to save their shots so that I can overwatch against any Praetorians that fly into me. Which, you know, is quite likely at this point. I have breaches though to do that. Hmm. Okay, this is a bit tricky. Don't really want to move my commander any more forward than he already is. Yeah, I'm not really doing enough damage, unfortunately. I'm just going to shoot the Praetorians, I think that's going to be more valuable. Okay, my Fireblade here does actually have two shots. Maybe he can take on this Plasmancer. I'm partially blocked. Uh, that's annoying. Um, let's move you forward one. Then the commander can go back. Then I can walk forward here and then hope I'm not blocked. Yeah. 96. Can this get the kill? We're two of them, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. And then we can move back behind the hill. And then you can finish off this guy, hopefully, unless I get super unlucky. Yes. Beautiful stuff. That's beautiful. And now the Riptide can block. You can block. And these three at the front here are very durable right now. So I'm feeling quite good about that. And I can cover my boys in the back here with this uh, strike team. Maybe I can even mark this guy. No, it doesn't matter. That's fine. We don't need to be marking everyone. Um, what do we want to do over here? Strike team, yeah, okay, I mean, strike team can go here. The other breacher can sort of cover this direction. And we'll move you here. Cool. Quite happy with this. I think this turn went quite well. We've got extra evasion for this turn as well, thanks to the Ethereal. So, we took out a lot of the major threats there, the ones that are going to use crazy range sorcery. And we've left all the melee threats because they were quite far away from us anyway. Oh, never mind. Praetorian staffs are actually pretty terrifying, even in range, apparently. Not as scary as they would be in melee. Oh, here we go. Hitting the back of our strike team. Okay, but they don't get a kill, so we're not really too bothered. Man, they've got a lot of Praetorians, but they're not that threatening. Oh, brilliant, the death marks. Two of them revived. Sounds about right. This X mark destroyer can be quite threatening. Yeah, they're trying to burst down the hammerhead, but... Trying is quite appropriate there. Ooh, more death marks. Stealth suits, nice and durable, thankfully. More death marks? Okay. Stealth suits absolutely tanking that. Wow, triple death marks on them. Bloody hell, that's quite an annoying composition to deal with. Having this many death marks when they've got so many melee in front, so it's not like I can easily get to the death marks. You see, normally I can charge forward and sort of burn these Praetorians with my Crisis suit, but I'm a bit concerned when there's 
Scorpec destroyers and all the rest. Now our buff will last for another turn, which is nice to see at least. Hmm. Right, I think I will... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, the Breachers can get on that Praetorian for sure. They need to rip him up. Then again, photon grenades on these guys could be useful as well. There's just so many. I, I really need to take out these death marks. Quite a lot of Scorpic destroyers as well. A bit of a weird composition here. I'm a little bit close for this weapon. But I think that's okay. We'll just start out and see what we can do to these death marks. Alright, we got one. That's... I was hoping for a bit more than that, if I'm going to be honest, but whatever. It's something, I suppose. Uh, if I had range, then I could... No, I can't really easily rotate around here, unfortunately. I want to get here to then burn these guys. I guess I could jump behind them, but... Hmm. Lowers my range damage. My ranged accuracy, at least. It's fine. Because you're not going to miss with a flamer. So that's okay. That's some pretty good damage right there. We'll take that. And we can do that again. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe I should have marked him first. Oh, they lived. That's actually quite annoying. Oh, it's alright. We can kill him with the fire blade. Yeah. We should be alright to kill him with the fire blade here. Breaches. Get in here. Get rid of them. If they stand back up, then the fire blade gets rid of them. Oh man, they're so annoying. Are they not? I would say they're very annoying. Don't know if this is going to kill. It's going to be a uh, roll. Missing too many shots. Yeah. That's annoying. So the hex mark destroyers need to be killed, but the Scorpec destroyers are also problematic. Which is a bit rough, really. Um, hmm. What the heck are we going to do here? One, two, three. No, that's going to be out of range. I need to be one more forward. Ugh, this is annoying. But then I'll be in range of this guy. Which I don't really like. So I guess we've got to be more conservative than that. But I really need to kill this this hex mark too. But the stealth suits should be pretty good at doing that. Let's see how much damage they can do. Yeah, okay. Fusion blasters are strong. No doubt about that one. I kind of want to pound them things. Death marks are so scary. on grenade which should do something now I can move in and blast these guys Moving out. 
I feel like I can't really move these forward because they're just going to get wrecked. Well, if I can kill the hex mark with these guys instead. Oh, nice, they got him. Then I can open up on some of these with my riptide. Fuck it, let's go in. We're going in. shot with this guy. I might preserve it to deal with these. Thank God that got rid of them. That is relieving. Unfortunately, Carbine is not great against these Praetorians. Pretty good armor on them. Ugh. Split off fusion blaster shots there, which is not ideal. Crisis suit is in a bit of trouble over here, but not really anything I can do about that. Float the ethereal over. Both of my crisis teams might have engaged a little bit too aggressively, a little bit too early there, but we'll see. Are those Praetorian for some reason using range attacks instead of melee, which is weird. Doesn't really make sense. A lot weaker. And they're going to get through the extra HP, so called shield on those units, but not much more than that. What's going on down here? Ooh, oh, they just annihilated a squad. I think that was just a normal strike team. Scorpic destroyers, pretty dangerous, hurting my crisis team there for sure. But what are the death mark going to do? This is the thing. Like, if all triple death marks focus fire any of these units, they're probably going to kill it. They're not focus firing though because the AI is very dumb. Well, that's lucky for us. But that's why the AI gets ridiculous buffs. Man, they've got so many death marks. They didn't kill anything though. What the hell? Oh, they did. Yeah, they killed this, this squad down here, but... Eh. 
Meh. We're not too fussed about that. Too many misses, man. Why are you always missing? Man, I just... This just doesn't do any damage. Just doesn't do any damage. Terrible. It's too inaccurate. What is going on here? Where's my fire blades gone? Right, so... Um... Fuck it, let's move over here and activate that big AOE buff. Oh, it's on cooldown. What? Why? Not with this guy. So annoying. Okay, Commander, come on, do something useful. Maybe the flame is better. Then I won't miss at least. Oh, but I'm gonna hit my own boys. Fucking hell, can't afford to do that. What's the splash on this missile? Oh, there isn't any. Yeah, yeah but these threats aren't even a single target. We're going to end up losing things here. Serious things. There's no way around it, really. I don't think so. Doesn't appear to be, anyway. Oh, that helps. Hmm, that was okay. Um. 
Right, let's just get rid of these Praetorians. Yeah. We could lose that crisis team quite easily, but yeah, I don't really know a way to not have that happen, so I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. Okay, splitting the attacks again so far. They like using those ranged attacks with the Praetorians. It's fine. But who were the Deathmarks going to attack? Yeah, I thought the Praetorians here and these guys would both attack the Crisis teams and take them out, but they'll probably die to the Deathmarks now, yeah. Oh, we're going to lose both our Crisis suits? That's a bit sad. I was too aggressive with them. It is what it is. A lot of fucking Deathmarks, man. They're tricky to deal with. I needed to hold the Crisis suits back and come around the side, but against this many Deathmarks, I'm sure we would have lost something. No matter what I did. That's what we want to see, 100% accuracy, you more like it. Pew pew. they're going to charge this guy with the ethereal. Bang. Oh. Kind of a hilarious amount of damage there. Kind of funny. Um, where's the other fire blade? Yeah, so we can do the same sort of thing again here. down so you get affected. More shots for everyone. Let's do it. It's like we're at the club. There you go. Now we can get some nice long range shots off again. Let's, let's hit these guys again for the splash. Oh, is there any splash when you overcharge? I guess so. I just love the damage that these breaches do, man. They're so strong. Indubitably. They don't really miss either, do they? Great. chunk our way through that pretty effectively there. No shit. I moved them too far. 
Whoops, I forgot I'd already moved them, so they had barely any movement. God's sake. Oh, and they stood back up again. Brilliant. <laughs> Classic. And I just shoot these guys. Wow, that was a lot of damage. What the fuck? They can't keep resurrecting, so put them back down. Well, he can apparently. Doesn't give a damn. I got shots with this guy. Who done know? Not me. I had no idea. Let's see if we can kill these Praetorians. Yeah, unlikely. Nice. Well done. All right. Pretty good overall, that. I'm happy with that. Breaches are quite tough too. Tougher than normal strike team models. So I'm quite happy indeed with it. I think this is all they've got. Yeah, these guys are still up, you see. So 12 points, 12% 12 of their army, 3 death marks. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, shit. Ah, we'll be alright, we'll be alright. 160, I think. I think we'll be okay. They both do about 60 damage. We should be fine, as long as they don't get a lot of crits. Yeah, these guys have only got two. Even though they do mark me. Which increases crit chance. They don't get any crits. So even with that little bit of focus fire there, they're not successful. Though they did take out two of my crisis suits, which is going to be impactful for sure. That's going to definitely do something. But... We should be fine overall. Hit them with the splash weapons first. And then if any of them stand back up again, we can put them back down with the fusion blasters. Goodbye. Dude, the range on these hammerheads is kind of nuts. Look at this. Look at this shit. The range on this thing. Wow. Pretty incredible supporting firepower. So there you go. That's a dub. And yeah, we lost a strike team and two crisis teams. So we got some losses, but, you know, first time fighting the Necrons, a real enemy, not just the neutrals, I'd say that's pretty good overall. Probably do want to replace those Crisis suits as nice as the stealth suits are for cost and durability. I miss the flamers. The flamers are good. And the missiles are good too, honestly. They're pretty great. Hmm. We could attack the Necron HQ right now, actually. Literally right now. We do have Broadside as a potential thing that we can get, but, um... Man, those Crisis cost a lot of points. Jeez. 210 each, yeah, makes sense then, I guess. Plus a Strike Team. Mm. So this is how far we managed to conquer. You know, I could take these regions as well, if I have to. But honestly, I mean, I just beat the AI, so I feel like the game would be trivialized at that point. I think I'm just going to push here and see how many troops the Necrons get. Uh, what? Units lost to achieve victory. Hello? Uh, 
Okay, they just flee. Hmm. I'm just going to reinforce. In their face. We'll pick up a broadside. It is an honor to join the cadre. I was thinking, do I get another stealth suit instead? Or do I just get more... Strike teams? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think against Necron's pulse rifle strike teams actually would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap all these guys to pulse rifles. Because the enemy's so damn tanky. The AP4 instead of AP2 will be really valuable, but also they're a mostly ranged kind of enemy. So I like having the extra range on them. Then I've got 120 to play with, which uh, I could technically get another Pathfinder with an iron rifle. Yeah, fuck it. That works out perfectly. Hmm. Alright, so we lose the crisis suits, but... To be fair, they're really expensive, them crisis suits. We'll replace them with a Pathfinder. And we get to give all of the four strike teams that we had pulse rifles. And we get a broadside suit. Yeah, because these would have been 210 each. And obviously a Pathfinder is quite a bit cheaper. So then having a Pathfinder instead of the other broadside, instead of the other Crisis rather, allows us to get an extra set of Pulse Rifles. Broadside's pretty interesting. You get the Smart Missile System, presumably not costing AP since it doesn't say AP here, and it's on a cooldown of 3. But it's extra uh, splash damage, which then synergizes with the Pulse Rifles, which can actually w finish off the weakened models. And otherwise, you've just got a heavy railgun. But again, like the Hammerhead gunship, it's optimal range 10. Which honestly is kind of nuts. And you know, this guy is armor 8 to 80 HP. So he's not quite as tanky as a Riptide or the Hammerhead. But he's still pretty robust. And if they do get close, he can actually use Crushing Bulk to melee them. To do something in melee. Not amazing at all in melee, but he has something he can do in melee. And then he's also got Seeker Missiles on a cooldown of 3. Which is good for killing those single entities from a very long distance of range 18. Range 18. I assume this is a active ability and not a passive. But I'm not sure. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this turn. Let's see what the Necrons do. They're probably going to reinforce fully and come back at us once again. The withdrawing and ceding territory to the Blood Angels. Who of course will be our next target after we defeat the Necrons here. So we are going to fight them again. And see how it goes. This time with a little bit of a different composition. Hopefully the Pulse Rifles will work out. I'm not sure they're going to be so good against the Blood Angels. Maybe they will. Maybe they will thinking about it. Yeah, they've probably been using flamethrower crisis suits, actually. The crisis suit's obviously great against chaff. Great against the neutrals early on. Killing all those Tyranid Gaunts and Orc Boys. Even the Orc Knobs, really. But as the game goes on, they become less effective. Things like Praetorians. You've seen that what my Carbines were doing to those Praetorians. Absolutely nothing. Bit sad, really. So, let's advance with our commander and our dual riptides over here. We're going to have the ethereal in the back, the broadside in the back, since it's incredibly high range. We probably should be having the hammerhead in the back as well, in spite of its durability and bulk. Just because 
it's really high range. It's got no business being that far forward. Pathfinders can be. They can exploit their range that they've got to punish the front lines. But then again, my strike team are also range 6 right now, I believe. Is it range 6 or range 5 optimal for pulse rifles? I forgot. I've not used them in so long. And we've got the fire blade, and that should be all right. The enemy is attacking, so they are the one to go first. Let us advance down this sort of narrow area. We should be able to set up a good firing line on the other side of this. Very limited movement on the broadside team. Well, it's not a team. Broadside. Battle suit. Only range free movement. But just a ridiculous amount of tools here. Yeah, the smart missile system is 0 AP. The seeker missile is AP, but look at the state of this range. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We see any plasmancers? They're getting a seeker missile to the face. We've seen a lot of movement there, but we don't know what's moving. Let us find out. What is it? What is it and where is it? First thing we see, Hex Mark Destroyer. Hold your horses though, Riptide, we might have some buffs for you. They are indeed range 6. I love it. Range 6, man. That's so good. That's really good. Can't deny that that is quite something. Probably going to use volley fire to get started. Having the hammerhead around here and blasting everything over this way will probably be quite strong. Stealth suits can mostly do what they want. You only have one ammunition for this Seeker Missile. Fair enough. I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of a ludicrous ability regardless, to be honest. Yeah, this accuracy is quite crackers. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was something. We'll save the the plasma rifles. Standing by. Ready for 
Execute the mud car. Okay. Let's see what they've got in store for us. I can never click those bloody scarabs. Yeah, Riptide wasting attacks on scarabs is kind of sad. I got a lot of scarabs. Oh, I guess because they had to fill their army up with a lot of chaff. So if you've got zero points, or really any amount of points and the enemy attacks you on your territory, you get the option to reinforce automatically before the battle starts, but only with chaff. Not any units that cost requisitions. But they did have a turn to get requisition units afterwards. And that's why we're now seeing warriors and flared ones and scarabs, because these are units that don't cost requisitions, so they're going to have a load of them. So we're going to have a lot of spam, which ironically means it's quite frustrating, actually, that we don't have the flamethrower crisis suits, because there is a lot! Oh my god, there's loads! Look at how many of these there are. Plasmancers and hex marks. Oh, okay, that was some brilliant damage to that hex mark, Jesus. Okay. Looks like he advanced extra far using his AP. So without a doubt, this is going to be a good spot to use this ability, but I need to actually get my Ethereal slightly closer right now. Alright. This is going to be a bit tricky. So, how do we want to play this? We need to get marking. Everyone, everywhere, needs to get marked. Right now, these guys are all in some form of cover, which is a bit awkward. Can't really get too much done to them. But I can blast in with the Riptide. Nice. It's effective. Ooh, 100% accuracy against these. What the hell? I guess they've got terrible evasion. Only five. Hmm. Interesting. I do have this ability to not miss something. So I could like use that on him. Oh, I could use that on him and overcharge. Yeah, let's do that. Or maybe even the one at the back? Oh, full, full obstruction. That's fine. So we do this and we will never miss. And then we can blast the Plasmancer. Okay. It's all right, that's fine. It's okay. Maybe want to come over here and do something. Not certain. These scarabs could be quite annoying. Let's make a bit of space for ourselves, I suppose. Hmm. Just take them out. Good. Ah, oh, yeah, you should be able to take out this Plasmancer. Uh huh. there is another one in the back there, though, which is a little bit annoying. We'll just shove you in the corner for now. Let's poke this hex mark. Let's move you. See what we can do with our breaches here. So we can get this through. Let's do that. Oh, if only that thing. Ah, hang on. Let's get some more shots and... No, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to move here, make all these things get more shots, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing not miss, 
and it's going to attack that Plasmancer at the back because I really want that thing to just drop. So let's go from here. 100% accuracy. Can't miss. How much damage is this going to do? Quite a bit one-shots. That was the goal. And we achieved it. And now we can hit that with the Plasma Rifles as well. Obviously, all these flayed ones are still alive, though, which is slightly concerning. But we'll deal with that after. Let's mark these guys with our breaches and blast them with our little pulse blasters. So we're great at blasting things when we've got blasters. There you go. But of course, they can revive, which is slightly irritating. Can mark that from a very long distance. Let's see, if I was to move down to here, what happens? So I can't miss this guy, so we'll we'll take that. Pew 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 pew. And I guess we're we're too close for everything else, really, to be hurt by us. Gonna move over here with this broadside. Hmm. Might just take the hit on the hex mark. My stealth suits would be great against this stuff, but I can't commit them right now with all these flared ones running around. Oh, but I've got a lot of damage here, man, to output. Really? Yeah, just shoot with the Pathfinders. This should do a lot. Oh, yeah. Very annoying. Leaves them with one HP. You taking the piss. That's quite unbelievable. We do have another Breacher. I just can't. There's like nowhere to move right now. Right, hold on. Uh, I'd really like these guys to be in range. You guys have already fired, so move out the way. Alright, move you down. Move you up. Bit of a jigsaw. But that's all right. Now what we can do... Oh, this guy hasn't fired yet either. Uh, is there really anything super valuable? We can get some decent hits on them. We can finish off them. We can finish off that. Just finish off that. I want to fire at them Scorpex and actually do some decent damage. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's nice. Oh. Right, yeah, now we've still got this. Oh, we can use the smart missile system on something. Let's use it on him. Pew pew. Oh. Nice damage. Oh, and that's not AP. Oh, beautiful. So we get another shot. Who the hell are we even firing at now? There's not really any high priority targets. We killed most things. <laughs> Um, in that case, just kill a flayed one if you can hit it. No, nope, misses. Whatever, not a big deal. We're not too fussed about that. Uh, now you fired, you can move out of the way. We can move you in. And that means that we can heal all these boys. And increase their evasion. And by heal them, if they've already got full health, they're just going to get a big, big shield. Which is very valuable. Very valuable. I can advance you, and you can do some pew-pew over here. No, actually, that's unnecessary. Oh, wait a minute. I can move here and flamethrower these. I've still got a flamethrower. Put it on this commander, I forgot. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Love a good flamethrower. Now you can take them out, because they're marked. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. 
Now we can hit these guys with a grenade. Bang! No evasion for you, boys! We've got a bit of range on these, haven't we? Yeah, go on then, fire away. Yeah, we've got one of them, that's alright. Can't really ask for more than that. It's fine. Alright, well that's half their army gone. A lot of scarabs and flared ones sort of loitering on the front lines here, but... You know, not too bad. They're not particularly powerful. As you can see. Granted, he did go for the breaches there, who are a bit more durable infantry for us. Stealth suits with the shield on them, never gonna die. So we're pretty chilling. And then the breaches are just going to be able to open up fire at close range here and basically one-shot them. What's the AP on these things? AP 5, yeah. Because it is actually doing some damage to the Riptides here, but nothing huge. We should be alright. If we keep getting the shield from the Ethereal, it basically tops up their HP. Cute. I don't know why they're getting so many Scorpic Destroyers. Here come the death marks. They're the real threat. Okay, they've still got a lot of things. See, we got rid of most of the point value just killing the leaders. Oh my god, they nearly killed this fucking Riptide. Jesus Christ. Oh, what? Oh, wow, they killed the Riptide. Unbelievable. Just by sheer spam of ranged attacks. That is kind of crazy. That is pretty nuts. Um, right. What are we doing here? We want to wipe out both of these. Ooh, why are we so inaccurate? What the fuck? I suspected that they would revive, so that's why I kept the ethereal. To deal with them when they revive. Oh, this is awkward. Hmm. Okay. It's tremendously awkward. It's awkward that these are in my back line now. I don't really have a proper way to fight them. I'll jump over the wall here, which will be okay. Hit these Scorpec and then move back, so I'm not in range of them. Wow, they've got so many ranged units, man. Jesus. 
Jeez. Right, what what's going on here? These scarabs are actually proving to be extremely irritating. I want to flame a buff of these, but I can't really get in a good position to do it. I should have marked these ages ago. I could have actually taken them out. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to burn them again. That'll get rid of these flayed ones too. The sun will probably revive. And stops this guy from being tied up into in melee. Oh, no it doesn't. Because these guys are still facing me. God damn it. Yeah, I'm gonna go melee. God, he is slow. This is very irritating. Yeah, this wasn't really ideal, to say the least. Not what I'd describe as ideal. Oh, they're probably gonna kill that Riptide too, fuck. Not good. I'm gonna have to move these breaches up. Also not good. Ironically, all this chaff is just a huge problem. integrating my boys 
I'm gonna chop him, my boys, up. Vaporizing my boys. My poor boys. Yeah, this Riptide's gonna die. There's way too many death marks still. Hmm. It's awkward. I feel like I need a bunch of cheap melee. Oh my god. I didn't expect all this ranged firepower to come out of nowhere after all those flared ones. Cell suits are really good. They're really durable for the cost. They went after the cell suits, not the riptides. But they are teleporting behind me with flared ones, which is pretty annoying, because now I can't move these. Yikes. But I have a pretty good chance to kill these. Oh, okay, we got them. They didn't revive, good. Fucking hell. That would have been problematic. But I need to try and get rid of these flared ones, so you guys leg it. Man. Why did that not kill? This gun fires too fast. Oh, it shoots at the same target and then I feel like it kills them prematurely. It's annoying. What the hell's the plan here with these breaches? Um, what are we gonna do here? Okay, let's get the ethereal back. Move you over. Extra shots. Go. Flamethrower will hopefully get rid of these warriors. Shouldn't hurt the Riptide too much. Good damage to the rest of them too. And now these breaches are free to breach. To breach as only breaches can. What are we doing with the strike team like? That seems pretty damn good. Yeah. 100% accuracy, sure, sure.
Let's see if these breaches can kill these flared ones. With their extra shots. Nice. Yeah. Good, so I can run away now. There's not enough flared ones now that they will kill me, though they might still pin me. No, they don't. Okay, good. What is can probably come down and finish me off, mind you, but there's not really much I can do about that. And we're way too close to Scorpic Destroyers for our own good here. And get some shots on these warriors. Very nice. Do I want to be this close? Yeah, fuck it. So now we get a decent accuracy burst against them. Hit them with this afterwards. Nice. Four death mark models down. Uh, and we can move slightly, slightly back here, which might, maybe, perhaps, save the life of that commander. Not commander, Riptide. Unlikely. And now these guys, though, are in threat, so, you know. What are you gonna do? I could have actually thrown that over there. That might have been quite useful. But too late for that now. This has been a struggle. We will definitely win, but we have lost a lot. Losing a Riptide is pretty bad. They're kind of vital units, it feels like. Kind of linchpins in our composition. Yikes! Yeah, now they're gonna come down and finish me off with warriors. Oh man, Path. so another breach I lost, stealth suits gone, just sad times, and maybe the Riptide too! Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of death marks still back there. Wow, they're going after the self suits now. I'm gonna kill this Riptide apparently. Well, I mean, that's great for me, but fucking hell. Yeah, I'll have a free Crisis suit team. Sure. Sure. Cheers to that. All right. I forgot about my smart missiles. Alright, now we're going to advance with the commander.
Yep, that flamer is very, very useful. Undeniably. Still blocked, apparently. What the hell am I blocked by? Do tell me. Because I'd love to know. Things are really tough, man. Really tough. accuracy through the wall. Gotta love it. That fire blade ability is very, very nice. Man, I just can't believe how much I lost. Jeez. I lost a lot. <sighs> Pretty brutal. Evasion just doesn't really do anything. When you're playing on this difficulty, the AI just gets too many cheats to its accuracy. It doesn't really do anything at all. But, pretty sure we win it now. Yeah. We do, without losing anything else. But, man. Whew. That was quite something. Did not expect to lose that many. Pretty outrageous, to be honest. And once again, all I can say is, I'm in love with Breachers. They're so good. I think I need more Breachers, less strike teams with the Pulse Rifles. The Breachers are so good at clearing the chaff, but even... It's not even just chaff. They're just good against everything. Really? Where's the final enemy? Where the hell are they? Hello? Have I gone blind? Um, Where's the final enemy? Oh, they're right there. Oh, the hell. I did go blind, apparently. Ah, oh, let the ethereal have the glory. Why not? 
That wasn't the final enemy. What the fuck? I was going to say Necron Warriors. Surely they're not 5% of the enemy army. Uh, where's the final enemy? Was it like this death mark and it teleported somewhere? I am confused right now. Where'd they go? Oh, hello. Yeah, they teleported away. Seek a missile! Oh, apparently that misses, that's a bit sad. But it didn't miss that. Of course, they stand back up again. Because they're Necrons. Jesus, man. Smart missiles, no AP. Seeker missiles do cost AP. Good to know. There you go, we did it. We did it. So, in the end, we lost... Oh, my God. Two strike teams, a stealth team... A Riptide battle suit and a Breacher team. Wow. But we did kill three Plasmancers, three Scorpic Destroyers, three Hexmark Destroyers, three Swarms of Scarabs, five Warriors, four Squads of Deathmarks, and seven Squads of Flayed Ones. Pretty crazy army. Actually kind of hard to deal with due to how good Warriors are against everything. And then these guys, just meaning I can't charge forward and actually kill the Deathmarks with my own Pew Pew. Pretty troublesome. Could have been worse though if those Plasmancers were actually able to get off their spells. But we did manage to kill them quite early. Pretty rough. I'm not going to be able to attack the Necron HQ just like that anymore. Because I'm going to have to reinforce. Now. Oh, actually, no. I'm lying. We're going to be completely fine because they need to... Uh, they need to reinforce as well. It's the end of their turn. They were attacking me with their final AP. Oh, because they spent one AP reinforcing and then another AP attacking me. So what I can do now is I can reinforce and then I can attack them. And they'll be able to get chaff, but that's it. So I'm going to replace the Riptide that I lost. And oh, I should really replace the Stealth Suit that I lost. I really like these Stealth Suits. I do like the self suits. Uh, we lost breaches. I honestly, the pathfinders. I'm not sure about them. This gun doesn't seem that good, really. So pathfinders have got more evasion compared to the strike team. They got 50% more HP as well. Whoops, no, that's the breaches. They've got 25% more HP and more evasion. Which, for 90, 90 points, is... Uh, is it even worth it? So the Ion Rifle makes them 120 points versus 90 points for the Pulse Rifle Strike Team. The Pulse Rifle is range 6, AP 4, 6 damage, 4 attacks. This is range 5, AP 5, 3 attacks, but 12 damage. Alright, so it's literally double the damage with one extra AP for for 25% less attacks and minus one range. So this is objectively a better gun, and that's not even including when you overcharge it. So yeah, that's that's useful. They are good. Pathfinders with ion rifles. In fact, maybe I should be running Pathfinders with Iron Rifles instead of Pulse Rifles at this point. Well, these two boys here with the Pulse Rifles have got crazy amounts of campaign history, and that improves their accuracy slightly, so I'll probably just keep them. But get more Breachers. Breachers seem to be key, to be honest. The broadside was cool. The Hammerhead is... Eh... Uh, eh... Uh. Honestly, I'm not really liking this hammerhead very much compared to like a riptide, though it is cheaper. Obviously, it's longer range, but hmm. I'm not sure I'm digging it, to be honest. 
But the only thing I can get now to fluff this out is another breacher, which, you know, honestly, probably not even that bad of an idea, is it, really? Another breacher. And that's more marks as well, more markalites. Yeah, and more photon grenades. Probably pretty worth it. I've actually got 20 to spare somewhere else, but not really anything to spend it. Oh, I can get this now. I turned this off. But you lose the... You basically get a little bit more durability in melee. You can actually jump out of melee without getting... Um, pistol reactions and stuff. And you get one extra armor, but you lose ranged accuracy when you jump. Whereas this boosts your ranged accuracy, and you get a way better gun with this. But minus one armor. So, I mean, this is... Nearly always better. If I had a little mark, get a marker drone on him, I suppose, instead of the shield drone. He doesn't really get focused down that badly, so... Yeah, I don't know. Shield drone's great, though. For, for costing nothing, giving you 15% DR, that's, that's kind of cracked, to be honest. So we'll save the army, and we will attack the Necrons at the start of the next episode, and see if we can take out their HQ, which we should be able to. It should be quite easy. And then we dealt with the Necrons, and then it's going to be turning around and fighting our way to the HQ with the Blood Angels. And maybe changing our composition a little bit to suit it. Maybe grabbing the Ghost Keel and taking that out onto the battlefield. And maybe picking up the Railgun on the Hammerhead gunship as well. Even more range on this thing, and just great at nuking down the enemies. But yes, that will be in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Hope you're enjoying this Tau Let's Play it's going to be off from your boy Topid. I am signing out.